Nej. It's uh, I'm too fat for this level of energy. You gotta, you're like collectively as an audience, your applause has made me out of breath. That's what's, that's what has happened. I am, uh, I was born with a condition where I'm, I'm too short for my weight. The doctor says it may never clear up. Um, getting older, I'm, I'm, I'm built like a lesbian web developer. It's hard when you're. It's hard when you when you're uh, a fat guy and you're a comedian because it, it, it all amounts to travel. You travel a lot when you're a comedian, and I feel like when fat people fly, it's nonstop harassment. Now, I feel like that TSA. They're not even looking at brown people anymore. You know, just like it all exists to harass fat people. From the minute you get to the airport, you get to the airport now, they're like, sir, you can't go to your, your gate without a bottle of water. I'm like, bitch, I can't make it to my mailbox without a bottle of water. <laughs> they're like, what do we do now? You know, they're like, you take off your, sh your, your belt, your shoes. I'm like, I can't see any of that shit. You know what I mean? I got a flight to catch. I think they should put in an express lane at the airport, at the airport uh, for fat people only. You know, you know how the first class has like their own special line? You get your own line for fat people only. I think that would be great. Now I see the skinny people out in the room wincing, you know, going, why should they, why should they get special treatment? Well, you're not thinking about how much quicker the skinny line's gonna go <laughs> with all the fat fucks out of the way, you know what I mean? Second of all, like fat people, we shouldn't have to go through the same level of security skinny people, AKA terrorists. <laughs> have to go through, you know what I mean? Remember 9-11, 19 hijackers, not one chubby individual on that poster. There's no such thing. Here's a little secret about fat people. Once we're on the plane, we don't like to move around a lot. Once I am wedged into that seat, I am there for the duration of the flight. Matter of fact, if you're seated on the inside of me and you need to go to the bathroom, go around, you know what I mean? Daddy's all set, I'm daddy. So then, Skinny people do annoying shit on the plane too, you know, like use the armrest. Um, it's like three inches of room I could have had, but now I'm muffin topping over the air in your area, okay. I'm in my 40s now, which is uh, disgusting. It's hard. It's hard being a, a professional comedian in your 40s because I feel like you get no respect for that. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes I would get more respect if I'm in my 40s if I told strangers that I worked at McDonald's. Because at least they would believe me, right? You know what I mean? If I, I'm in my 40s and I tell a stranger I work at McDonald's, they're probably thinking like, oh, wow, he's a loser. But they believe me, you know what I mean? I tell people I'm in my 40s, I tell a stranger I'm a professional comedian, they look at me like I'm a liar and like I work at McDonald's. That's what they... <laughs> we have fun. You know, people have to explicitly tell you that they have fun. I love that. We have fun. Oh, okay, yeah. It's always people you're 100% sure don't know what fun is. Like a dental hygienist or a youth pastor. I, I had a youth pastor. I grew up Christian. Anybody else? Ooh, not anymore. I fell out, out of love with the Lord. Um, I'll never get when. I was, a, I was 12 years old. I, I, I went to summer camp, Christian camp, a sleepaway camp. It was going to be for a week. I thought it was going to be awesome. And, uh, and the, the youth counselor, she's telling me, like, we have fun, Patrick. We do a little chapel every day for an hour. And then you have the whole afternoon free to swim. They had a big pool. It was awesome. But the first night of, uh, of Christian camp, this kid, Garrett, Fucking idiot. <laughs> Climbed over the fence to the pool, jumped in, hit his head, died. I know, they closed the pool all week. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I guess they didn't want people swimming in the dead kid water. And, and they filled every afternoon with extra chapel services, which is, you know. And the... The youth pastor, she heard, me, she heard me complaining about it. And she's like, Patrick, you know, you got to think about Garrett and his family. 
You know, what would Jesus do? I'm like, well, pretty sure he doesn't like disappointing people and he can walk on water. So he probably opened the pool so we can, you know, have a nice time. We have fun. <laughs> How about a joke for, just for the people at home? Alexa, turn on all the lights. <laughs> Stupid. I got engaged this year. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Never getting married. <laughs> just trying to buy some time. Come on, cancer. <laughs> for her, not me. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> her mother pressured me, man. Her mother pressured me into, into getting married. She started, like, texting me pictures of engagement rings, you know, just in case you're interested. I put up with it for, like, a week, and I started texting her links to nursing home websites. <laughs> just in case you're interested. <laughs> I'm kidding. My fiance, she's lovely. She's smart. Beautiful, funny. She's got a body like a Greek statue, you know, pale, big ass. <laughs> Tiny penis. <laughs> it's not true. We met on Tinder. My fiance and I, we met on Tinder. That's crazy. I'm telling you this, I do not miss dating. I do not miss the dating apps. Uh, the, the women nowadays, you guys got horned up and liberated, and it is aggressive, you know what I mean? I matched with a girl one time, and her profile, this is what it said, I want you to treat me like a high school and shoot some kids up in me. <laughs> too soon, you know? It's always too soon. Political. <laughs> <laughs> We matched, and she's, she sent the first message. It was very weird and aggressive, you know? No, like, uh, friendly stuff up front. She's just like, where do you live? That's the voice I assigned to her. <laughs> I was like, specifically? That's a weird first question. She's just like, how many people do you live with? I was like, is this a census? What's going on? <laughs> she's like, is your place clean? I was like, mom? You know what I mean? <laughs> Girls are kinky now. I can't keep up with dating the young girls. I don't miss dating it, the, the young girls. They're, they're so kinky. One of the last girls I ever dated before I got engaged, she, uh, she said, we should go to a sex shop. And I was like, that's cool. I like sex and I have money. <laughs> Let's do it. And we went to the sex shop and she said, ooh, you know what we should do? We should try anal beads. And I was like, we? <laughs> now you can try anal beads, you know what I mean? The royal we can try anal beads. I don't know how much you know about anal beads. Here's a little, here's a little tidbit. They don't make starter anal beads. They are all regulation NBA basketball sized anal beads. And I'm not worried about cramming them up there. I just don't, how do you get them out? You know what I mean? You gotta hire a guy or a woman cheaper. And... That's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, I know. The wage gap is fucked up. Moment of silence. The more you know. <laughs> Plus, when you're a comedian, you have a weird sense of humor. It's hard on a first date to calibrate that. I never forget. One time I picked up a girl for a first date. We're driving, and she noticed some uh, lip balm in my center console. And she's like, Patrick, my lips are dry. Do you mind if I use your lip balm? Unless you have a weird thing about sharing. And I just looked right back at her. I was like, I don't have a weird thing about sharing if you don't have a weird thing about getting herpes. <laughs> no second day. I think women are meaner after breakups than men. I think women are more vindictive. They plot, they plan, you know. I broke up with a girl one time. She told me a week later, she's like, just so you know, I went out and fucked a bunch of other comedians to get back at you. <laughs> Just like, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? Because I didn't go out and fuck a bunch of other fat bipolar women. <laughs> a 
lost some of you on that one. <laughs> Take your meds. Okay. <laughs> Needless to say, I spent a lot of time jerking off. Or as I like to call it, getting rid of the baby weight. <laughs> I, saw, uh, I saw a bumper sticker the other day that said, uh, my kids have fur and paws. And I was like, come on, they can't be that ugly. <laughs> I don't have kids, I can barely afford my own drugs. Um, I don't know, kid, people are getting, a lot of my friends are starting to have babies now, which is rude, you know? Because they didn't ask me. And people start having babies that cancel plans all the time. I, I hate my friends' babies, I hate them. And you can't tell your friends you hate their baby, you know what I mean? Because they don't have a personality. You don't have a reason to hate this baby. I can't tell them they owe me money or I saw them kick a dog. <laughs> People go baby crazy. You ever seen that show 19 and Counting? Holy shit. 19 and, count and Counting? Pull out. I did the math on that with my fiance. We did the math on it. If she's had 19 children, that means she spent 14 years of her life Pregnant. <sighs> Correct. Yeah, my, my fiance looked at me, she's like, I can't even imagine being pregnant for nine months. And I looked right back at her and said, I can't imagine you being pregnant for the drive to the abortion clinic. <laughs> my, friends, my friends' kids, they ruin our plans before they're even born. Uh, a couple years ago, I was doing shows at Planet Hollywood on the Strip, Super Bowl weekend. I invited my friend Sean and his wife, Laura, out. I was like, you guys should come out Super Bowl weekend. It's going to be awesome. Uh, see some comedy. We'll make some bets. We'll watch a game in the sports book. Sweet. Because Sean and his wife, Laura, love Las Vegas. They come all the time. But this time, they said no. They said, we can't come because Laura, his wife, four months pregnant. And it probably wouldn't be a good idea to come to Vegas and be in a smoky casino for three days. Because if anything happened and the baby came out fucked up, her words, <laughs> we would always blame ourselves and wonder, was it that weekend in Vegas that fucked up our baby? And I was like, good point, you know. But if you don't come, then it's just genetic. <laughs> you know? The baby comes fucked up. You don't have an excuse, you know? It's hard to look at a fucked up baby and be like, we did everything right. <laughs> the baby's fine. Well, it's not fine, but it's healthy. It's, the, they named the baby Xander, Wakanda forever. And Xander with an X. And I was like, what are you, what's the goal here? You know, you want him to grow up to be a clown or a magician? And, uh, and they're like, Patrick, you don't understand. Uh, uh, we named him Xander. He's X. Uh, that's going to help him get a lot of pussy in life. And I was like, first of all, I think you're cock blocking this kid more than you, more than you know. It's like, Patrick, you don't understand. There are a lot of women out there in the world who have made it their goal to try to fuck their way through the alphabet. He is X. That's a hard, hard letter to cross off the list. And I said a couple of things. Number one, I'm not sure it's appropriate for you to name your only son after the seven psychopath women in the world <laughs> who are trying to fuck their way through the alphabet. Number two, he better wear two condoms because X comes at the end of the alphabet. And he is definitely gonna get chlamydia from some girl in university who just fucked her way through all the elementos. You know what I mean? Facts. I think I'm too selfish to have kids. Like, uh, too selfish. I like to do what I want to do when I want to do it. You know what I mean? You have kids. You have, how many people here have kids? You're only out having a good time tonight because you pawned them off on somebody else. You know? 18 years, you're responsible for these kids. They get in trouble. You're in trouble. And you have to solve it. You ever seen that movie Taken? With Liam Neeson? You know? His 16-year-old daughter runs off on a European vacation, gets abducted. Now he's got to solve the crime. You know what I mean? You know he had plans that weekend, right? <laughs> like he was gonna have a barbecue, bench some Handmaid's Tale. Now he's gotta run off to Europe. You think I'm ever running off to Europe to 
chase my dog. I don't reach for candy I drop in the sofa. You know what I mean? <laughs> Better luck next time. I'll make another kid. They're fucking free. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> you guys know about Amber Alerts? I think that's crazy. A kid, it's a good system. It's like social justice, you know, crowdsourcing social justice. Kid goes missing. They send out the details, description of the kid, vehicle, things like that. It's like Pokemon Go for adults. You're like, get them. It's a good system. I was in Texas doing a show a couple years ago, and uh, on stage I got an Amber Alert, and it said, be on the lookout for this child, and I gave a description, and it said, a uh, uh, license plate number, 2020 Cadillac Escalade. And I was like, sure, you know, maybe this girl's missing. But maybe she's on her way to a better life. 2020 Cadillac Escalade, that is a nice vehicle. You know what I mean? <laughs> You gotta go rescue her, get her back to her trailer park F-150 family. Give her a chance! <laughs> oh, fuck. I wouldn't be good at punishing kids either. Like, I would never be good at punishing kids. I'd feel like a hypocrite, you know? Like, if my kids were doing something that I used to do when I was little, like, punishing them for that, wouldn't you feel like a fucking hypocrite? Like, uh, like one time, the templates for punishments when I was a child, never made sense. I don't know if you had this. One time I got caught smoking cigarettes when I was little, and my mom came to me and did the typical smoking punishment. Do you guys know? Smoke the whole pack. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was gonna. You know what I mean? Like, who, who smokes one cigarette and throws the pack away, mom? Stupid bitch. That template makes no sense in adult life, right? Like if you got caught stealing from your job, sir, your boss wouldn't call you in, sit you down, be like, we've noticed you've been skimming from the accounts. Next time we're gonna need you to empty them out, okay? Back to your desk, buddy, good job. I've never been cheating on my girlfriend with one of her hot friends, you know? She comes in and catches us. She's like, oh, you like fucking my friends? Let's get them all over here. You're gonna hate pussy, mister. <laughs> kidnapped a dog the other day <laughs> not a real dog I'm not a savage you ever see those uh, stick figure families on the back of a van they have like the parents and the kids and the little pets I scraped the dog right off the back of a Ford Windstar <laughs> fuck you you know what I mean victimless crime it felt amazing and I picture the family coming out of the Walmart too, you know, like maybe the parents wouldn't notice, but kids notice everything, right? Kids are gonna see the back and just be like, where's our dog? Fucking classic. <laughs> and then the dad's gonna find the ransom note <laughs> that I left on the windshield where it's just like, if you ever wanna see your dog again, buy another sticker, you know? Because most of it is under my nails, I'm gonna be honest. You wanna have a good time, go into the Walmart, buy a pack of those stick figure family stickers, put them in your wallet, put them in your purse, forget about it. But next time you see a car that has a stick figure family, you'll remember that you have some of those stickers, take them out, go through, find the craziest looking one in the deck and just add it to their family. <laughs> That's creepier than taking something away, right? You wanna be a real creep? Take, a, take an adult and stick it on there touching one of their children. Ooh. Just come out and be like, is there an uncle we didn't know about? What the fuck? <laughs> My fiance and I, we did get a dog. We got a dog. It's, uh, no, no. I can't, I'm, bro I'm so broke from this dog. Like, Jesus, this dog lives better than me. It drinks only filtered water. My fiance throws it out if it gets too room temp. <laughs> this dog has an insurance plan. I'm a comedian, I don't have insurance. Do you know what I mean? Now I take the dog to the vet, I have to transfer my symptoms onto the dog, you know? I don't know, she's walking funny. I think she can't feel her toes. You think she might have diabetes? I don't know. <laughs> Boarding the dog is expensive. You go out of town, boarding the dog. Some of these places, $60, $70 a night. I'm like, there's a Holiday Inn Express down this street. It's $39. This place doesn't even have continental breakfast. You know what I mean? 
I got a plan. Next time I go out of town, I'm just gonna take my dog to the Humane Society and turn her in. If you come back and she's there, it was meant to be. If not, you're at the dog store. Pick another dog. Come on. I don't think, I don't think they call it the dog store. <laughs> this dog's been expensive since day one. This dog cost over $2,000. Golden Doodle, these dogs. This is insane. Everything I ever got growing up was free. You know what I mean? You know, I grew up in Florida in the woods. You know how we got a dog? We found a dog. <laughs> Everything I had was free. For instance, your parents probably bought you presents for Christmas. <laughs> no, not mine. My parents saved up camel cash from packages of cigarettes. <laughs> told me the balance. Gave me the catalog and let me pick out my Christmas present. And I, one year, you remember camel cash? One year, they saved up two million dollars of camel cash and I picked out the most badass camel windbreaker in the catalog. Show camel, thumbs up, awesome. I was gonna show up and let them know. And it's a good memory for me too because not only was it a cool jacket but I'll never forget that winter when my parents smoked enough for me to be warm. I thought it was gonna look so cool in that jacket, and I would have if it fit. <laughs> Not poor anymore. We bought a house, me and my fiance. We bought a house. It's, uh, it's my first big adult equal relationship, and I told her if we do this, it has to be fair. It has to be equal, 50-50. You know what I mean? You get this one. It's a big house too, a lot, of new, a lot of new rooms to explore, a lot of room for confrontation. The other day she walked in on me in one of our spare bathrooms, pissing in the shower. Oh. It's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. I told her it's not a big deal, guys do it, women do it, which is more disgusting because it like picks a leg and just goes down. <laughs> like a paddle boat. She's like, Patrick, a lot of people do it, but they're usually taking a shower at the time. You know what I mean? I was just arching it across the bathroom like I was in the Matrix. It's a two-story house, which presents problems for fats. Um, never had a two-story house. It's a lot of work. I try to plan my day around just going downstairs once, you know? Do I have everything I need? Okay. My, my, my fiance, she's not fat. She doesn't understand it. She's very petite, you know what I mean? I look like, the, I look like Seth Rogen if you ordered him off wish.com. <laughs> she's very petite, you know, like when we have sex, it looks like she's crawling out from an overturned bus. <laughs> if you walked in on us, she'd just be like, there's been a horrible accident, Jesus Christ. And there's cum everywhere, he must be good. She's very sexually aggressive. She's very sexually aggressive, man. It's rough. It's emasculating sometimes. I have to look at her and be like, you know, I'm more than a dick and a pair of perfect tits. <laughs> sometimes I go out doing a comedy show, you know. Come home, she gets all done up on like two bottles of wine before I even shut the door. I come home, she's in my face. I want to fuck four times tonight. Eh. I'm just like, you need to call three of my friends because uh, it seems like a lot of work, you know? <laughs> I try to make deals with her. Like, how about we fuck one time and then I make us some dinosaur chicken nuggets, you know what I mean? Because it is your birthday. <laughs> hmm. 
Mm. She says, you want to go upstairs and have sex? I'm like, you got to pick one of those. You know? <laughs> like I'm hyperventilating just thinking about it. You know what I mean? And it's not like I, I, look, I can fuck and I can go upstairs. I just need like 700 Mississippis between those two. You gotta put on an episode of Property Brothers, or as I like to call it, foreplay. <laughs> I think the whole thing is like, uh, you know, expectations. It's just expectations. You gotta find somebody that matches. You gotta find somebody as desperate as you. <laughs> and usually that involves lowering your expectations. A little bit because I like it's not your fault, it's not my fault. I think we all grew up being brainwashed into what to expect in relationships. Think about it. We all sat down when we were little and we watched Disney movie after Disney movie after Disney movie. And whether or not you realize it as a, as a kid, those movies are love stories, right? And they're teaching you expectations about what to find in relationships. And it's not realistic. There's a reason they had to draw it. <laughs> What do Disney movies teach women? Sit there, be beautiful, and one day, your prince will come. How many fucking princes do you think there are on the planet and you get one? Get fucked, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying you don't deserve a good guy. You're all beautiful women, let's say. But a prince, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a decent man, but I have $17 to my name and my car squeals when I turn left. Well, I'll understand if you don't call me your highness. And ladies, your prince might come one day, but it'll be on your face. Yeah. And then he's gonna leave, because you were just practice. Oh, truth hurts. It's no better, it's no better for men, by the way. It's no better for men. My favorite Disney movie growing up taught me horrible, horrible expectations for relationships. My favorite Disney movie growing up was The Little Mermaid, because I'm into redheads that smell like fish. <laughs> Don't judge my fetishes, this is a safe space. <laughs> How dare you? Don't kink shame me. That movie taught me horrible re relationships expectations, right? That movie is about a woman who, in order to be with the man that she loves, gives up the ability to speak. Been looking for that shit for 20 fucking years. It doesn't exist. I split the room with that one, didn't I? I feel it. I don't give a shit. I'm going to eat after this. <laughs> and before. Like to, I like to look to the animal kingdom for relationship advice, you know? They got it figured out. It's all nature. It's all nature. It's none of this human bullshit, social dynamics. Animals have it figured out. I like to get really high, think about an animal, and imagine what it looks like having sex. I haven't looked this one up yet, but I thought about it. Uh, giraffes. Ooh. Googling that after the show, aren't we, huh? I'll check your browser history. I have so many questions, right? First of all, do you think their dicks are longer than their necks? That's the first one. No, right? Because then giraffe blowjobs wouldn't work. Are you picturing it? How are you picturing it? Because I picture one up on a hill. Some sort of giraffe ladder. My favorite, uh, my, my, my favorite sex of the animal kingdom is uh, the octopus. Now, don't, don't yell it out or say anything, but does anybody in the room know how oct uh, octopus is? Octop See, you're gonna hate me for this because I gotta break the fourth wall. This isn't part of the comedy show, but it actually is octopuses. You're gonna feel stupid when you look it up later. Everybody thinks it's octopi, it's really not, it's octopuses. You're gonna feel dumb as fuck. 
All I'm trying to say is, does anybody in the room, just raise your hand if you know, does anybody know how an octop when an octopus wants to get some octopusy? <laughs> you do know? Okay. So you call me, you call bullshit if I'm lying about this. This is 100% true. When the male octopus wants to have sex, it rips off its penis. Just yoink! <laughs> throws it at the female. Uh, I don't know why I picked you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it's underwater, so it's slow motion, which is way more, that's badass, right? Just like. <laughs> the female octopus catches it, inseminates herself, and that's not even the craziest part, okay? Because that is crazy. How many people in here are in the middle of a relationship? You're, you're having an argument with your woman? She's yelling at you about the dishes or some shit. How many dudes in here would love to do that? Just like, oh yeah, bitch, thud. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's she gonna do to come back from that? Go up here, get eggs, fling them back at you? No. You gotta order those a month in advance. <laughs> it's not even the craziest part. Here's the craziest part. Then the male octopus grows another dick. What? Have you been reading my diary? Because I wouldn't even, oh my, I'd never leave the house if you could do that. You, I'd never, just, just like, next, 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 next. You would never be happy. You know, dude, you just try to grow the biggest one you could grow. You'd, you'd have 11 inches. You'd be like, whoa, you know, three. <laughs> so many questions for the octopus's community. <laughs> First question, do they run out? You know, because you'd be a lot more careful who you took home at the end of the night, right? If you had a limited number of these things. Second of all, if they do run out, is there a warning sign, you know? Do they start turning pink like cash register tape? Thank you guys so much for coming out. Appreciate it.